Geeky Science. Here's our Geeky Science for the day. It's just an absolutely fascinating study published in uh, Biomedicine and Pharma Pharmacoth Pharmacotherapy, uh, the December uh, issue. Uh, mechanism of metformin regulation in central nervous system, progression and future perspectives. Um, well, actually, let me get to that in just a second. This is the piece that precedes that. This was, this was just published in studyfinds.org. And it's titled Brain Rejuvenation Breakthrough. It turns out that our bodies are actually producing stem cells for new brain cells all the time. We didn't know this until relatively recently. We thought we had a certain number of brain cells, and as we get elder and we start losing them, they're just gone. But in fact, the brain is constantly producing new, new stem cells for brain tissue, for neurons and ganglions and axions. And those uh, stem cells are either stimulated to produce new, new brain cells or inhibited from producing new brain cells, apparently by one thing, and that's the amount of glucose, the amount of sugar or glycogen, um, principally glucose, circulating in your bloodstream. And so if you reduce that level of glucose, and they, they, they did this in this, this study was done with rats, of course, this is, we don't know people yet, but uh, if you reduce those levels of glucose, then the brain starts revitalizing itself. Now, I have noticed, and this might just be my own personal biochemistry, I inherited from my father the gene for type 2 diabetes, although I don't formally have it. And I think that's because of my diet and exercise. But nonetheless, um, I've known throughout my whole entire life that if I want to put myself to sleep, all I have to do is eat a bunch of sugar, and it just knocks me out. And, you know, makes me exhausted and, and puts me to sleep. Well, it turns out that that's a terrible thing to do to yourself because that sugar is, is preventing your, your brain stem cells from becoming new brain cells. It prevents the brain from revitalizing itself. I mean, it's just a remarkable study. Uh, can, can the secret to maintaining a youthful, sharp mind be as simple as watching our sugar intake? A new study from Stanford Medicine suggests so. And this process, by the way, is called neurogenesis, which is the generation of new nerve cells. And the failure of neurogenesis from having a lot of sugar circulating in your bloodstream contributes to mummery loss, uh, reduced cogn cognitive function, and uh, potentially exacerbates neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And in fact, I've shared with you before, there's a considerable body of research and a whole lot of people speculating that Alzheimer's is actually just diabetes type 3 that Alzheimer's is something that gets kicked off by people eating high levels of sugar or having high levels of sugar in their diet or not having, or, or having type 2 diabetes and not treating it. And as a result, they have these high glucose levels and that prevents the brain from revitalizing itself and eventually it starts eating itself. And uh, so this is just an absolutely fascinating study. Now, now let me just, the backside of that, or buttress that with the second study, which is the one I kind of started out with, which is titled Mechanism of Metformin Regulation in Central Nervous System, Progression and Future Perspectives. And in this one, what they discovered was that uh, uh, metformin, which, which is the most widely prescribed drug in the world, it's a very, very safe drug. Uh, it can produce stomach upset. It can produce, uh, you know, the main side effect that you get from taking it is diarrhea, basically. Um, but if you take uh, probiotics along with it, typically that goes away fairly quickly. Um, and it, it's a drug that is usually taken for type 2 diabetes because it lowers blood sugar and, you know, takes you out of type 2 diabetes. But it is now being sold, and there's numerous, there's uh, three online doctors that I know of that do this, and, and, and uh, individual physicians as well, who are giving low-dose metformin, like 500 milligrams sustained release, uh, you know, one tablet a day or two tablets a day, to people who don't have diabetes as a longevity drug. There's considerable evidence that people who take metformin actually live longer, even if they have type 2 diabetes, than people who don't. And uh, now they're finding that not only that, but uh, I'll, I'll just read to you from the abstract of this uh, peer-reviewed study that was published in Biomedicine and Pharmacotherapy. Metformin can reduce liver glucose output and improve insulin resistance. Recent evidence from in vivo and in vitro has, in other words, in, pe in petri dishes and people, has confirmed that metformin can transport across the blood-brain barrier and activate specific neurons and neuro neuroglia to exert neurological actions. 
Metformin can exert potential neuroprotective, neurotrophic, and neurogenesis stimulated actions. In other words, not just protecting your brain cells, but actually building new ones. Metformin also exerts anti-inflammatory effect by inhibiting microglial activations and regulating microglial polarization. Now, that, it's a lot of big words, but what they're describing is the early stages of Alzheimer's disease, in my opinion. I know I'm, I, you know, I'm not a neuroscientist, but uh, I am pretty familiar with this stuff. And I'm a big fan of metformin as something that can uh, inhibit uh, age, that slows down aging. And that, you know, as I said, you know, is a very effective treatment for uh, type 2 diabetes. So thought you might want to know about that for the next conversation you have with your physician. And metformin does require a prescription. And, uh, and don't take your medical advice from me. <laughs> like I said, I'm not a doctor. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can Google this stuff. And you can speak with your physician about it. It's 17 minutes past the hour. What's on your mind? For the rest of the hour, I'll be picking up your calls. Stay with us. It's the Tom Hartman Program, the place where despair is not an option.